What's up, Madden 17 fans? My name is Cody. I want to welcome you to the YouTube channel here. Uh, today, I want to talk about really just one thing uh, simplicity. And I've thought about this uh, a little bit lately this idea of like doing a few things well, but more specifically than that, uh, with the channel rebrand and all those things around the corner, like how do I, you know, what does it look like? And, and realize that we couldn't go with the branding model we were going to go with because. Somebody else in the community already is doing that. Um, th those those things have kind of led me to really think long and hard about what do I really want to say. Um, and I think what happens, it, it really what I've come up with is like, here's what I want to say. In this video and in every video I do from here on out, this, this is what I want to say. Do the best you that you can do. Okay. I think a lot of people uh, try to do what everybody else does. And they never really do their own thing. Um, and the problem with that is you are best when you're you. Um, you're, you're best when you do what you do best. And I, I don't know if that really makes sense to you guys. What I'm really trying to say and get it across in the Madden sense is what you're going to see today is 4-3 is, is under on defense. You're going to see Gun Bunch on offense. You, you may see... Uh, a couple of different things on on our red zone but by and large you're gonna see those are the two formations you're gonna see you're probably gonna see me run six plays uh, on defense and um, six plays on offense something like that and uh, the reason uh, for that is because I've I've kind of changed my motto in in this game I would really like to do spend more time on this, and I'll spend more time on this in the future. Um, what you'll find, uh, hold on one sec, let me, let me get this stop here. So what you'll find, the more you study the game and the more you watch other people play, is everybody does the same thing, they just do it from different formations. Okay, everybody does the same thing, they just do it from different formations. There are principles, concepts, or whatever that transcend the formation. And um, what you'll see, I don't really do a whole lot. I pretty much do really two or three things. I run levels on offense. I run, um, and then I run smash. I run smash, I run levels, and I run this other concept. It's like a dig, uh, dig or dag, or I don't know how to exactly say it. It's really what, it's, it's more of like a, a basically a run and shoot uh, concept. Those are the three pass plays I run. And then I run halfback power, and then I run halfback dive, and then I run halfback counter. And that's pretty much my, in a nutshell, that's what I run. I think that's only six plays. Um, defensively, I run cover three, cover two, uh, three deep, three under, two deep, four under, zone pressures. And that's pretty much what I do day in and day out. What I think the key is, is that you try to stop everything your opponent is going to do in one play as opposed to using multiple opportunities to not only control the game, control where, the, what, what, what can they possibly go to? What can they possibly get? What can, the, the, and that's, I, I think we just don't think about that. So when you're playing uh, defense in Madden, uh, this is what's really fun for me. I, I enjoy... I enjoy the defensive strategy and the really the hardness that defense poses the the dilemma of like what how do I arrive at the play I'm going to run and that dilemma really does it really does drive a lot of my questions about this like what 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 really determines it what what is like the deciding factor like it, because what I what I try to kind of preach and and, and really try to really get you guys to understand is is if they you can only do so much and what happens is if you do you can it, it, there's this phrase and I don't really know the saying off the top of my head but really what I what I think it kind of says is you can either be a min, uh, an inch wide and a mile deep or you can be a mile deep and an inch wide. Or no, 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 a mile wide and an inch deep. 
and it's a it's it's something that talks about about people. But what I've done is I've kind of really changed the conversation towards more of Madden. And what I see over and over again between with people that play this game and people really that, that I think is a dilemma that you face in football. And this, I'm going to use an analogy uh, or an example in a minute. I think it's going to make a lot of sense. What I continue to see people doing is reacting, not acting. And the problem with reacting instead of acting is you are at the mercy of the person who is doing the acting. What I'm trying to really get across to you is I don't want you to react. I want you to go forward, not backward. And so to go forward, what I want what I want to kind of explain this, I want to elaborate two things here to explain this. First thing is, is uh, I want to use a real story. So I read somewhere in an article that I think 70%, somewhere in the 70s, maybe 73, something, somewhere in the, in the mid-70s, about 70% of defensive plays, defensive formations are nickel. So like w- what it really means is out of out of all the snaps, out of all the t- out of all the plays that a defense is on the field, 70% of the time is spent in the nickel formation. Now, what a nickel formation is is it's is it's uh I believe, let's see here, there's, the, the, the key to the nickel is there's three defensive backs, okay? And what it means, what it, what it, what it, the, 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 the kind of tradition is, if you come out in three wide receivers, so, you know, like a, a gun bunch, right? If you come out, like this guy's in a, in a bunch formation. In theory, I should be in a nickel defense. Why should I be in a nickel defense? Here's why I should be in a nickel defense. I should be in a nickel defense because... He, um, because then my number of corners matches up to his number of receivers. So he has three receivers. I should have three corners. I should be in a nickel defense. Now they take this all the way up. So if you, so they implemented the dime formation. So here's the nickel. Here's the dime. So four corners. Okay. And the theory is if you come out in a really like a spread package, then I should counter that by coming out in a dime package. Right. And so on and so forth. You go five wide, I should come out in five corners. That's a quarter defense. If you come out in, say, like an I formation, then that's when I should come out in a 4-3 defense because that's the personnel grouping. Here's the problem with that logic. Number one, what happens? I want you to think for a second here. What happens when my, for example, the Patriots, right? So the Patriots are really built to run two tight ends, two or two tight ends and three or two receivers and a running back. So an ace package, right? That's what the Patriots are built to run. So what that would detail you to run as a defense is you would run a... Um, a standard 4-3 under defense. The problem is that's going to leave Rob Gronkowski to be guarded by a linebacker. Okay, number one. Number two, what if that is the um, what if that is the Dallas Cowboys, for example, who have a really good nickel corner in Orlando Skandrick? If they keep Orlando, would they would it, or if New England stayed in ace all game, that would force the Cowboys to leave Orlando Skandrick, one of their best players, on the bench. Now, that's an extreme example, but I hope it illustrates the point that, that this is this is what I'm trying to go for. Number one, why would you play dime? Why would you play a dime package? If you're built to run a 4-3, like a 4-3 under, like like your best players, you have really, really solid linebackers, right? Why would you run a dime? Like what, what, 
why would you do it? What I keep finding, the more and more I play, and the more and more I learn, is the game is not about that part. So those are the couple of examples. Now, now the next kind of story I want to tell to arrive at this point is a story, or not a story, but a, something I read by, by Vince Lombardi. So what Vince Lombardi... Uh, or I, I want to use Vince Lombardi to kind of basically set this up. You have, there's really only two types of plays. You have a power play, and then you have a counter play. That's it. Nothing else. You have a power play, and you have a counter play. There's a setup. So you set them up with one thing, and then there's a counter. There's a power and a counter. And so... What I what I so so Vince Lombardi, for example, ran the power sweep. That was his play. That was his play, he ran it to perfection, but at the end of the day, it was simply a power play and he had a counter to it. A trap play. Or a, I think it was a trap or a dive or some kind of interior run. Okay. Here's the the the, the point is Number one, there's only two types of plays, power and a counter. Number two, why would I... I don't want to ever react. I want to proact. Great run by Derek Henry there. I don't want to ever react. I want to proact. I want to act. I don't want my opponent to dictate what I'm in. I don't want to act. I, I won't let that happen. I will never call a defense because of the formation my opponent comes out in. There's tendencies. There's tendencies, right? And you can play off tendencies and find out like what do you have, what, what, you know, what do you need to take away in this situation, and, and those things are okay. But 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 more, but think think beyond the, the 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 beyond the glass. Think 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 beyond the picture. Think about it like this. You, when you pick a play, like there's got to be a reason. There's got to be a reason. But your reason should not be dependent upon your opponent. Because if your opponent... Because then your opponent is dictating what you're doing. And so what, what you're in danger of eventually happening... This is why I say make every play look the same. What you're in danger of happening is your opponent is going to basically force... Is going to show you one thing, do a completely different thing. And all of a sudden you're in trouble. Because if a guy came out against me on defense, right? If if he came out against me and he was running his offense and I knew he wanted to attack this section of the field. So I want he wanted to attack this section of the field. Okay? And he wanted to do it only when I was in this type of formation. Only when I was in 4-3 under baseline. Eventually, I'm going to figure that out, and I'm just going to put somebody there. And I think we don't really think about that until it's too late. Because what you'll find is, if the more you watch competitive Madden, here's what they do. Here's what they do. They everybody wants to get to this point. If they get to this, if they get to do this, this is this is really where they want to be. They want to run cover two. They want to send double edge pressure off the outside, so they want to use it in the middle of the field. That's what everybody. That's that. That's the end point for most defenses. That's what they're going to do. And they may make a few adjustments here and there, but but by and large, that's really what they're going to do. Okay, that's that's where that's where the rubber meets the road. Like that's that that's what they're going to hang their hat on. But the problem with that is what's open when you do that. Well, the middle of the field's open, the deep side. There's there's different openings, okay? And my my point, this is really all I want to say, is why wouldn't you use multiple plays and just take away certain things? 
But when I run cover two, so you'll watch, if you watch me play, I run Tampa two. I start out in Tampa two. Why do I start out in Tampa two? It really has nothing to do with um, wanting to take away the flats. Because if you know anything about a Tampa, a, tr a true Tampa two defense, it's not about taking away the flats. It's about taking away big plays. So it's basically we're going we're gonna to drop guys back. We're going to force you to take underneath. That's why I want to run Tampa 2. Because what Tampa 2 allows me to do is it allows me to force them to say, okay, to, to kind of establish this principle to them that, hey, here's the deal, right? Here's the deal you're not going to be able to throw deep streaks against me. What I then do off of that is it's not that I adjust in the sense that like, okay, I know he's running a flat, so I'm going to put a flat out. It's more of like, okay, now that I know I've established that he has to go here, then I'm going to counter it and we can see what he's going to do. And I, I, I hope that makes sense to you guys because it really – is something I think we should spend more time on. If you watch the game, what you saw, what you just saw was I didn't do a whole lot of things. I just didn't. I Number one, I didn't do anything drastic, so I didn't get burnt. And number two, I didn't turn the ball over. You do those two things, normally you're not going to lose. Normally. And I think that's something we should spend more time talking about. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'd like to talk more about this concept. But this is kind of something to think about uh, as you kind of go forward and put your scheme together. Number one, there's really only two types of plays. There's a power and a counter. So don't spend so much time finding 20 plays. Find two. Find two to three. And don't cycle through them. Know why do you call this play in this situation at this time. Think about that question. Why would I, why would I call my power play instead of my counter play on first down, first or second down, third down, whatever it may be. Something to think about. Let me